So this morning, we have a program that's going to take a few twists and turns. And I think the place where it starts is one that has been on my mind for a few years in the ways that so many people in this industry are really amazingly focused on the well-being of others, they often sacrifice the well-being of themselves. And so while there is a lot of conversation about uh, consciousness, I think sometimes the work, the inner work, doesn't get done when so much energy and effort and scrambling, especially from our amazing social entrepreneurs that are here, is spent externally making the world a better place. So I was really pleased when a member of the SOCAP community introduced me to Bo Xiao earlier this year. Bo is a very successful entrepreneur and venture capitalist, but as you all know, sometimes monetary success does not equate with happiness or fulfillment or an overall sense of accomplishment and well-being. So I was really, um, I felt really privileged to hear about Bo's journey and I invited him to tell that story on this stage. It's worth noting also that in the theme of social capital markets and impact investing, in October of 2017, Bo created a fund and committed 100 million of his own family's capital to that fund to invest in a venture capital style, but really specifically focused on investing in companies that are dedicated to reducing suffering in the world. And they're using technology to further develop humanity's consciousness. So I think this is a really unusual piece of the social capital markets that you're gonna be excited to hear directly from Bo. Please welcome Bo Xiao. I wish I could walk around a little bit, but it looks like I'm stuck on the podium. Uh, actually, I could walk around. Well. Uh, thank you for coming bright and early uh, to, this, uh, to my talk. Um, I enjoyed the opportunity to tell my story to you. Um, I sold my company when I was uh, 29 years old, my first company, and, and I retired. Uh, and I was expecting all sorts of good things happening because I sold my company for a couple hundred million, and I had everything that a normal person would want in terms of money, freedom, fame, time. But it turned out that I wasn't particularly happy. The fireworks lasted for two weeks, um, maybe not even that. And um, what I discovered was that I actually... Uh, become less happy than before. Um, I had thought that I would... Well, actually, before I sold my company, I didn't worry about money. And, but however, after I got, got rich, I became worried about money. I worried about losing it. And because before, I know whatever I had, if I lose it all, I could make it all back in a couple of years. I know I could get a job and do whatever and make it back. But I knew that if I lost the money I had then, after I sold my company, I would never make it back without a lot of luck. Let's face it, any kind of, that kind of success requires luck. And I wasn't sure I could make it back. And the problem is, I was perceived as this person in this position in society and life of this place now, and then suddenly if I, have to, if I lose it all, that's going back to the normal life, that's very, very scary. Another thing is I thought I would enjoy my time with my kids. I had a lot of time in my life. I could travel, I could spend time at home. But it turns out that actually I wasn't very relaxed around my kids. Even when we're at the beach, I would be checking email for no reason. And I actually did not know how to spend time with them. That I didn't enjoy spending time with them. I'll be trying to teach them this, scold them for that, but I didn't enjoy a connection. I didn't really have a connection. So I discovered over time that, fairly quickly actually, that what I thought will bring me happiness and fulfillment doesn't. That no amount of external achievement 
could bring a inner well-being or satisfaction or fulfillment or freedom that I thought, and I think almost everybody thinks, that they will get. Um, in some ways, financial freedom does not buy freedom. Financial freedom is not freedom unless one is truly free. And, and for me, the path to freedom, and I'm on that path, and not like I have complete freedom, is through working on ourselves, the inner journey. Because what I found is that, and not just me, but my own personal experience has been that I grew up in our lives, my, in my life, you know, feeling inadequate in different ways. And I wonder whether you do too as well. That deep down inside me, and inside a lot of people I know, that we have harsh criticisms of ourselves, and, and we feel, I feel, I felt this kind of a lacking in some way. And I think different people's lacking is different. I feel it's particular lacking. So for example, if I walk into a room, I feel very nervous. If I a room of cocktail party people, I feel really nervous. Like I felt like nobody would want to talk to me or connect with me. Only when I feel like I'm superior to people in the room, like I'm somehow, I know something they don't, I'm richer, I'm more powerful, more famous, whatever it is, or they need something from me, then I feel secure. But if I get into a room where I have nothing to share, I'm just a person, I felt incredible amount of tightness and, and nervousness and fear around being not connected with. And I know, I realized fairly quickly that no amount of fame or wealth or money will buy me the kind of freedom I need. It would not, it would not solve this problem. Um, and I suspect that I'm not the only one that, in fact, I know a lot of super wealthy people, super successful people, who are worth billions, or tens of billions, who really do not like themselves very much. And, um, but the problem is that we all seek to find this kind of fulfillment through the outside. We try to fill that hole. Like, imagine there's a hole in our body, there's a hole in our soul, that we try to fill that soul with these external achievements or money or fame or number of friends or even doing good. Um, it's a nice way to fill that up. But it actually doesn't. So when I realized that, I decided that I didn't want to do traditional business anymore. So because in the meantime, when I sold my company 16 years ago, and then 10 years ago, started a venture capital fund in China that today manage about $3 billion. And in the past 10 years, we invested about 30 plus unicorns, companies worth more than a billion, uh, usually early stage when only a few people and, uh, and now very large ones. So we have a very enviable record as an investor, and we made a lot of money for our, ourselves and for our investors. But as I look at those companies, very few of them really matter in my newfound realization. Yeah, I will get somebody faster by five minutes. We, we invest in Uber of China. Oh, we, we get there somewhere faster. Great. Or, or we might invest in a social network that enable people to waste their time chatting with each other um, with some kind of a superficial connection. Um, and um, I found that to be increasingly meaningless. So, fairly recently, I decided to leave the fund I co-founded and, and set up a fund with our own capital, my family, my own, my own capital, about 100 million to start with, to invest companies that bring inner well-being to people. Um, and when I look at the world, what I find is the world's problems today um, stem largely from the lack of inner well-being. 
that we try to, just like I said before, try to find fulfillment, trying to find inner health and wholeness through external achievements. And that kind of a drive not only uh, not fulfill the inner lack, but actually is the root of a lot of the world problems. So if you even take the example of, say, environmental you know, issues, yes, there are is global warming. You can look at you know, all these technical causes of global warming, and we find solutions through carbon rationing and whatnot to solve it. But I don't think it can be solved because we have a fundamental issue where we want to grow our economy at 5% a year, and our resources simply cannot grow at 5% a year. And no matter, yeah, we can increase our efficiency here and there, and, but fundamentally, our, we, our need for more and more things is insatiable because we have this inner being, and we found that we have more and more things actually didn't fulfill the whole, therefore we want more things. We want to keep growing so that we have more things. And if that's not sated, then growth has to continue to occur. I'll take the example of poverty. Right? Um, about $30 billion is needed to, feel, to feed all of the world's hungry people. About $30 billion. There's about a billion people there are living uh, with, with not enough to eat. $30 billion is a big number. But it's not very large. Right? Uh, just even just think about in the US alone, uh, we spend about on diet products and programs. Annual spending in the US is about $60 billion. All right? It's a pretty startling statistic. Right? It's like not only the having too much is not only did not bring well being, but actually it's hurting us. So we have to spend more money so that we avoid the harm of having too much or eating too much. Um, and so I think what happened is we, we have been, the problem has been made worse because we have, you know, the increasing focus on materialism that we receive these marketing messages every day in our TV advertisements and other media programs about you know, wealth and fame and consumption being important. Right? Every ad you see on TV, not every, most of the ads is around you have to look better or you won't have more things. Right? Or the increasing uh, attention economy. Attention economy, Facebook and others that try to grab our attention, but they have an engine to grab our attention regardless of what costs us. Right? So if from a perspective of these companies, more attention to these apps and to these devices makes it more valuable for those companies. Well-being is not on the, in the cards. And therefore, but if you think of a company, what's the best way to get attention? It's through addiction. Addictions of various kinds to hit our animal brains, the dopamine hits and all that, so that we feel inadequate without getting a like on Facebook, and then somehow we think of getting more likes and getting other forwards and whatnot, these somehow will make us feel better. That's a, almost an accelerated version of what I was talking about, of finding a, sources, of a, sources of freedom and sources of fulfillment and healing from the outside. And the system today is working against us. In some ways, the system is is accelerating through advertising, materialism, attention, economy, to lock us further and further into this seeking satisfaction from the outside. And, and unless we do something about it, um, I think our inner well-being will be continue not get better, but actually but get worse. So that's why, I don't know if you know, one out of six Americans are on, are on uh, adults are on antidepressants. One out of six. And, um, and if you think about from a company perspective, 
Companies is no more than an organization of people. Company, any company today is a group of people organized for a common purpose. That's really no more, I mean, all these fancy terms of fiduciary duty, limited liability, whatever it is. But if you really look at the core of it, any single company is a group of people organized in a particular way for a common purpose. And different organizational structures and motivations, all about just how do we get people to work together toward a common goal. But unfortunately, today, we have a mantra of companies' purpose is to make money. It's success. Value is primarily, and in most cases, only measured by how, money, how much, what's the long-term DCF, discount of cash flow of a company, a cash flow stream. That's how we value a company. That's like a mantra today. But if we, in some ways, it reflects our inner journey in some or the lack thereof, right? When we believe that a person's journey is about maximizing consumption and maximizing our outer well-being, things coming from the outside, then it's not too far a stretch to believe that company's purpose is the same thing. That it's, since a group of people, then the group of people need to maximize the external accolades and, and value. Rather than doing what it's really the people need, what the, what the society really needs, which is not the same thing as what maximizes a particular company's profit. And the worst thing is, is it's a vicious cycle because when company wants to maximize the external and value and profit, it sends messages out to all of us to consume more, to seek va value from the outside, and locks individuals further in this in the Buddhism terms, we call sansara, or some kind of illusion of well-being, or seeking well-being. And of course, when we feel inadequate, we want our companies, our investments to do better, to make more money, so then we push our companies to do, you know, not push, implicitly, we vote, vote with our dollars, right? We invest in companies that, that maximize their profit, and, and the whole the cycle goes. So I know, I know people here, do not need convincing that a company needs to have multiple bottom lines. But what I'd like to point out is that the problem of what we see on the outside of companies seeking profit and all that stuff ultimately comes from ourselves, comes from our, our inner journey. So that's why the fund that we, are, we have started is to focus on inner well-being and also, we very explicitly say that our fund is not to maximize profit. That profit is secondary to doing good. And in some ways, I hope that 50 years from now, uh, we will look back, you know, and our, grand, our kids or grandkids will look back on, on this era and say, why did we actually go through this phase where people, a group of people would would, they will spend their lives trying to make more money and maximize profit of a company when we know max in the process of marketing profit, it doesn't do society so much good. Shouldn't be we organize every, shouldn't every single company or organization have a primary goal of increasing human wellness in whatever way defined but hopefully as, as much wisdom as possible, um, and profit being secondary. That, of course, being sustainable, uh, I think being competitive to be able to serve your customers better is always good, and I'm not advocating uh, losing that. But shouldn't the primary purpose of any group of people working together, including the li limited liability companies, public or private, be focused on social well, uh, no, well-being of mankind or society. And I hope that will be the case. And, and to do that, I think the things we need to do first is to start with our individual selves, to be on a journey of self-discovery and healing, to find our vulnerabilities, our fullness, and our wounds, and our infinite possibilities. Thank you.